here's a quick video in which I show you how to make a movable hole in soap film. You could call it uh, an anti-bubble. You'd be wrong, but you could call it that. I'm going to call it that in the title for the clicks. I need the clicks. It's quite surprising when you first see it and then you think about it for a bit and it kind of makes sense. But it's also a really useful metaphor for a cell membrane. I'll get to that in a minute. I'll first of all show you how to do it. All you need is some kind of frame. I've used thick copper wire. You then dunk that in some soapy liquid to get your membrane. You then drop a loop of thread onto the membrane and then you pop the bit of soap film that's inside the loop. And the loop of thread suddenly jumps out into a perfect circle. Why does it form a perfect circle? Well, the soap film is under tension because it's elastic. It's also fluid, so it can move around. And energetically, it's going to move in such a way as to minimize its area. In the same way that when you open up a balloon, the elastic membrane of the balloon will minimize its area by blowing air out of the balloon. When you introduce a hole into the soap film, the soap film will minimize its area by maximizing the area of the hole. And you may know that for any given fixed perimeter, like the fixed length of the loop of thread, the maximum possible area is if you form that perimeter into a circle. And that's why this wibbly wobbly loop of thread suddenly pops into this perfect circle. I came across this trick when I was doing some research for a kid's book called The Bacteria Book. Soap bubbles are actually a really good metaphor for cell membranes, like the membrane of a bacteria cell. Cell membranes and soap bubbles are both made of amphiphilic molecules, which are molecules that have a hydrophobic end and a hydrophilic end. And in the case of cell membranes, they're phospholipids. So look, at one end, you've got these two hydrocarbon chains, and that's the same structure as oil. And as you know, oil and water don't mix. So this is the hydrophobic end, the end that doesn't mix with water. This end's got a whole lot of other stuff going on and it's polar, so it does dissolve in water. It's soluble in water. And this is very similar to the structure of soap. So you've got one end that will mix with the grease on your dinner plate and you've got another end that will mix with the water in your sponge, making it easier for you to remove the grease from your dinner plate. What's really cool is if you put some phospholipid molecules in water, then the hydrophobic ends will attempt to avoid contact with the water by facing each other. And you end up with what's called a phospholipid bilayer, like this. Soap film is very similar, except it's the hydrophilic ends that point inwards, and there's a layer of water sandwiched between the two. And the metaphor doesn't end there. Here are some things that they have in common. So both cell membranes and uh, soap film are fluid. As you can see, this hole is moving around and you get a similar thing with cell membranes. You have these molecules that float around within that phospholipid bilayer and these complex molecules have a hole in them and it's for cell transport. It's to allow different molecules in and out. Finally, viruses often have this phospholipid envelope around them. So from the outside, they look a bit like teeny tiny cells. And it's believed that these envelopes are used to evade detection by immune systems because they just look like normal cells. And in fact, these virus envelopes are stolen from the host cells. And actually you can demonstrate that happening with this model here. Imagine my breath is a virus pushing its way through a cell membrane. They go, look, imagine there's a virus inside that little bubble. This video was supposed to coincide with the release of my kid's book, The Bacteria Book, but I'm incredibly disorganized. This book's been out for over a year now. And in fact, another book by me is out. It came out last week. It's called Science is Magic. So I have three books for kids now in total, the other one being uh, How to Be a Scientist. I'm not gonna bang on about these for too long. I will just say uh, How to Be a Scientist and Science is Magic uh, are both full of experiments that you can try at home. I worked really hard to make sure it wasn't just the bog standard experiments you get 
in books like this. So there's loads of stuff in these books that you won't find anywhere else. Uh, I'm also really proud of the Bacteria book. It's all about microbial life and the little characters and the illustrations and stuff done by DK. I just love them and I hope that you would too. Therefore, kind of five to 11-ish years old, so I appreciate that's not really my YouTube demographic, but you know, maybe you have nieces and nephews that you keep forgetting to buy birthday presents for. Just get one of these and stick it in a cupboard and then you, you're good to go. Um, if you're interested in that and you feel like being generous, then there are affiliate links in the description that you can have a look at. And uh, yeah, that's it. I hope you enjoy them. And I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to hit subscribe and I'll see you next time. Oh, 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 oh,